So did that motivate you to tell your story? I opened up. <laughs> Actually, now I don't feel like telling my story because mine's similar because mine had some cops in it too. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, listen, Bob- listen. Babylon, you know? Hey, hey, in our lifetime, I mean, I, I can only count how many times we get stopped by cops even if we're doing absolutely nothing. So let's hear yeah, your story. Yeah, man. Well, yeah. tell us, tell us your story. So it we ain't all no can big relate. deal. What? Look at that. When look, I was look, working look, with look, promotion, look, look Instagram Live, they're all they they're all looking. They they're waiting. They're waiting. <laughs> they they well, they're saying that I'm full of shit right now. That's what they're saying. If this me. if this is considered a crazy story, then so be it. But so be, it's your crazy. I story. was part of an executive team for an independent promotion company in entertainment music, and we were going up the road for Daytona Fest. Back in the day, you know, when the whole Daytona thing was going on, and you know, like I said, I'm behind the scene. I'm uh, I'm writing reports for the record labels. You know, back then we had multiple record labels when artists used to go to record labels for a record deal and stuff like that and get signed. You know, so we were working Cash Records, RCA, Virgin Records, Interscope, stuff like that. And you know, we had a big event, me and my crew, which was only at the time we just said three of us will just go to the the event and. Um, I was a designated driver to drive overnight. You know, you're young, so you want to travel at night because you don't care. You don't feel danger. You don't care. So we're driving up on the coast. We have our, our equipment in the car, laptops. We got all this stuff going on. We have some herb. We have some drinks and stuff in the vehicle. And we're, I'm driving through this dead zone area. It's like really dark, you know, and you know, at the time I wasn't wearing my, um, my glasses and all that. And we got stopped in the middle of nowhere. When I said nowhere, when you come outside, it's pitch black. It was about two, three o'clock in the morning. And you got stopped. And we by got cops. stopped. We got stopped by <laughs> undercover cops, the, uh, some regular looking cars. Then I said my heart was beating out my chest because my heart is beating out my chest right now listening to this story. <laughs> I mean, I was like, oh shit, what are we gonna go down right now? You know what I'm saying? So they stop us. And I stopped the vehicle because I was driving. I had on a red bandana, so it looked like I'm in the gang. <laughs> you know? So I had braids, you know, back then and all that. So they stopped us and uh, immediately they said, what, where, what are we up to? Where are we going? And it's like, we're going to a big event. They told me we're, we're, we're promoters of the entertainment industry and the record labels. Of course, they didn't believe that. So they said, we must come out of the car. You know, we don't know our rights too much as young adults. So we got out of the car scared, middle of nowhere, with herb and alcohol in the car. And they searched the car from head to toe, you know, yeah. and brought out dogs yeah. and everything like that. It was, yeah, it brought out dogs and all kind of stuff. I was like, Rumba Club, the Wild One, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I pray. I'm, I'm a man, I love to pray. So I was praying about it while this was going on. And, you know, the, the cop, undercover cop, and it wasn't like a state trooper, was undercover cop said, he said, we we sound intelligent. He's like, oh. y'all look like a bunch of troublemakers, but you he's, sound intelligent. Sound, for what? For what? For your race? That's some, huh? that's some racism. I, I don't know. I'm being biased. I'm calling that. I'm calling. I'm calling the race. Yeah. Card. I'm calling yeah. The race I mean, card. me and my I, friends. Me and my friends were, were melanin. So and these were um, Caucasian cops. You know. So we don't know what was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> you know, we we don't know. So, but we we told the truth. We said, listen. They say, is anything? And we said, there's some herb in here, and there's some drinks, and I think the bottle was open, and the herb was there. Not, not too much herb, but enough. You know, the California stuff, the good stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I don't smoke no more. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, the man said, the, the cop said, you know, if this was a regular state trooper, each one of y'all would have got locked up. But for this herb, you know, and an open model of, of, of liquor. How much herb was it? And uh, I would say probably about $100 worth of creepy herb. And and how many? You know, 100 a 100 no more than one hundred and fifty bucks, I believe. Yeah, that's a long time. And, and how many of you guys were there? Three. Three. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to see like the math. Like he's gonna pin uh, a ten piece out of you guys, but you know, okay, whatever. But go on. Go on. Yeah. 
Yeah, but you know, he took the herb and he's and he's looking at us and like he, he wants to. He smoked it himself. Us. That's what he did. He smoked <laughs> himself. <laughs> Bobbing on troll with the herb down the down the lane, man. He that's threw what, it over that's the what, bush. That's what they want you to think. <laughs> you know, I, I I couldn't believe it. You know, I don't know if he hit, had some in his hand or what, but he threw it away and he said, you know what? He searched a laptop, all the equipment we had, but I think he found our, our business books and our laptops. That had, we had a lot of filing in there that, that documented about real business that we're going to yeah. promote and market for the record labels and we are the executives and they say you know what i believe you i believe you guys you're lucky it's not a straight trooper i'm gonna throw this herb away and just drive straight to get to daytona and pay attention to the road and do not drink if you drink any more of that liquor you know you don't want to get stopped but i wasn't drinking or driving or nothing like that and i wasn't smoking either but it was just immediate. so that was it by grace of god you know they didn't beat us up they didn't shoot or nothing, but I was scared. I was scared for my life, man. Let me tell you something. It was rough, man. But I, I prayed. I, I prayed it through, man. I prayed it through. Yeah, I, you know? I I seen innocent people just on the road, and the cops right next to them, not even paying them any mind, and I see them scared, and 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 they and they, they do absolutely nothing, but just a cop mm. driving by I just get nervous, you know. But um. Warren, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you never know who which one of them is gonna be the one that's ruthless and the one that's gonna be negative, you know, you just never know, but you know, you know, the manager and the executive of the crew say, you know, you know, it, 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 it they have nothing to do with what's going on here, herb and, and they could, you know, just, you know, it's just like, I'm in the vehicle with them, you know, so we're just doing good deeds and this has nothing to do with them, it's mine, and whatever, so with the honesty came out and I guess they felt it and they let us go, so. Well, Warren yeah. Jones, I want I want to thank you for that story. You know, thank you for sharing with us.